Hello learners, I am Dr. Karuna Harkara Sinha. Today we are going to study integrated teaching and learning. Before we go to the nitty gritties of the topic, let's explore a situation. Ms. Sushma teaches science, while Sophia teaches language in the same class 4. While Ms. Sushma was teaching the characteristics of different parts of a plant, Sophia was trying to develop appreciation of beauty in nature through a poem in the text. One day both of them decided to take the class together combining science and poetry. The topic they chose was flowers. They planned the lesson in detail while Ms. Sushma was to deal with different types of flowers and the parts of the flowers and Miss Sophia was to recite and develop appreciation for beauty of different types of flowers. But due to some accident, Miss Sophia had to remain absent in that class. Miss Sushma carried on teaching with a plan both of them prepared together. This may sound absurd, but what Miss Sushma was using was an integrated teaching learning process. After learning this unit, or after completing this unit, you will be able to explain the concept of integrated learning, its needs and relevance. Describe different types of integration and their use in meaningful learning. Use the techniques to integrate learning experiences within one subject and integrating different subjects. Identify the characteristics of integrated textbooks and learning materials. Integrated learning and teaching is also known by some other nomenclatures like the integrated curriculum, interdisciplinary teaching, multidisciplinary teaching, thematic teaching and synergistic teaching. Let's explore some definitions of integrated learning and integrated curriculum. An integrated study is one in which children broadly explore knowledge in various subjects related to certain aspects of their environment. This is one of the definitions which has come to us in 1981. We have another definition which talks about integrated learning refers to education that is organized in such a way that it cuts across subject matter lines bringing together various aspects of the curriculum into meaningful association to focus upon broad areas of study. It views learning and teaching in a holistic way and reflects the real world which is interactive. This definition has been given to us by Shoemaker in 1989. The crux or the focus of this definition is that the various concepts across the various subjects are being brought together into the curriculum in order to make any learning and teaching process more meaningful for the students in order to give them a holistic experience of the subject. Let's see the another definition. Integrated curriculum is a way to teach students that attempts to break down barriers between subjects and make learning more meaningful to students. The idea is to take around themes or organizing centers that students can identify with such as the environment, life in school or more traditional areas like myths and legions. This is the definition which has been given to us by Bean in 1977. Again, the crux or the focus of this definition is that the entire subject matter of the different subjects is broken down into different segments and the related components, related concepts are being brought together in order to make the subject matter meaningful for the students. Therefore, having a look at the definitions, we can say that all the definitions of integrated curriculum or integrated teaching include the following. 
So we can say that integrated teaching or the integrated curriculum is a combination of different subjects. Different subjects are being brought together and combined together. Integrated curriculum can be termed as the flexible student groupings. It can also be termed as that more than one curricular subject is being brought into the subject matter. And we can say that in integrated curriculum, an emphasis is on the real life experiences wherein the project work is being given to the students in order to develop problem solving ability among the students. The last one is that the integrated curriculum is the source that go beyond the textbooks. That means the information is being collected from different sources and the information is not being collected only from the textbooks. Which textbooks? Not only the textbooks which are mentioned or which are prescribed for the students. Now let's have a look at the process and types of integration. We have three broad categories of the types of integration. One is integration which happens between subject areas. Second is the integration which happens within subject areas. And the third type of integration is the integration which is beyond subject areas. When we look at the first type which is between subject areas, under that type we have two more types coming. One is the multidisciplinary integration and the other one is the interdisciplinary integration. Second type of integration is within subject areas and under that we have the intradisciplinary integration happening. The third type of integration is beyond subject areas and under that we have the transdisciplinary integration happening. Learners, now let's have a look at each type of integration separately. The first is the integration within subject area. What is this kind of integration known as? It is an integration within one subject area or intradisciplinary integration is a process of integration where the knowledge and skills of same subject are connected together during the teaching learning process. In other words, it is a process of combining different concepts of several topics within the same subject during the process of classroom transaction. So we say that the different concepts related to the different topics of the same subject are connected together. A linkage is established between those concepts in order to make the teaching and learning process an effective and interactive one for the students. For example, we can say that in language teaching, we can combine reading, writing and oral communication through storytelling. This is an example of intradisciplinary integration. Let's have a look at one more example of intradisciplinary integration. For example, in environmental studies in class 2 for the topic life in our village. So we can combine and integrate family, neighborhood, festivals and occupations linked together in the context of personal and social relevance. Now look at this particular example learners that how the life in our village is being connected with some other similar concepts in order to give the topic life in our village a holistic perspective. We have one more example in mathematics. In mathematics the concept of percentage for example we can integrate percentage, we can integrate decimal fractions, 
we can integrate calculations combined together to learn profit and loss. Now there are different topics but there is some similarity as far as the three different topics are concerned and they belong to the same subject. So the knowledge and the skills involved over here in the different topics, a connection can be established over there in order to give the topic a holistic perspective and teach the students this particular topic from the holistic perspective and give them a complete understanding of the concept of percentage. Let's have a look at the second type of integration now, which is known as integration between subject areas. In this type of integration, we have the process of integrating the knowledge and skills of two or more different subjects during the teaching and learning process, which may be of again two types. First is the multidisciplinary integration. In multidisciplinary integration, the subject area outcomes remain distinct, but due to some meaningful linkages, they are connected together during the process of transaction. So which means that the subject area outcomes remain distinct as far as that one particular subject is concerned. But there may be some meaningful linkages as far as the topics in different subjects are concerned, relevant topics between different subjects are concerned. And an attempt is being made to establish a connection between those meaningful and relevant topics which have some linkages together and bring them to the teaching and learning process while the teaching and learning transaction is happening in the classroom. Let's have a look at one of the examples of multidisciplinary integration. The main theme is water. We can establish a connection with science like removal of impurities water, bone diseases and water cycle. We can establish a connection with the mathematics also. For example, the topic can be measurement of volume and flow of water. We can have a connection with geography subject also and the example is natural sources of water, different water bodies we can establish a linkage with language also like composition, prose and poetry on water, rain, rivers, springs, etc. We can establish a connection with history also where we can discuss water disputes between different countries. We can establish a linkage between physical sciences also. For example, we can have a discussion on the constitutional elements and physical and chemical properties of water. Learners, now let's have a look at another type of integration which is known as interdisciplinary integration. In interdisciplinary integration, we have a process of integrating the interdependent or common knowledge and skills from more than one subject areas during transaction process. Learners, we do find a little similarity, rather more than little similarity between the multidisciplinary and the interdisciplinary integration. For example, concepts of mathematics and science are acquired by integrating to singing, painting, dancing, sculpting, etc. Now we go to the third type of integration which is known as integration beyond subject areas. This type of integration is a process where the students day to day experiences are connected to different subject areas to acquire knowledge and skills. Now learners, this is a totally different kind of an integration because here the focus is the day-to-day -day experiences of the learners. And we know that learners have huge experiences. They come to the classrooms, they come to the schools with lots of previous experience with them. And while teaching different subjects, 
the focus is on connecting or establishing a linkage with their day-to-day -day experiences so that they can acquire new knowledge and skills also. As far as this particular type of integration is concerned, we also see interdisciplinary and disciplinary skills in a real life context are focused so that the real integration happens over there. So that means again I will say that the real life experiences are being focused so that the actual correct and perfect integration happens and they learn they establish or they acquire a new knowledge based on their previous knowledge. Learners, for example, we have the project-based learning, which is an example of integration beyond subject areas. How do the students complete their project learning? An example or a problem is being given to them and they are being asked to find out the solution to those problems. They explore the information based on their own real life experiences and try to find out the solution to the problems or the projects which have been given to them. And this is the actual learning and this is the most important type of integration. Now students, let's have a look at the three types of integration which we did and let's compare and contrast the three approaches like multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary. For example, we have organizing center where we have standards of the disciplines organized around a the theme. We have interdisciplinary skills and concepts embedded in disciplinary standards and under transdisciplinary we have real life context student questions as far as the organizing center is concerned. Now the second point is conception of knowledge. Under multidisciplinary, we have knowledge best learned through the structure of the disciplines. A right answer is there and there is only one truth as far as the multidisciplinary integration is concerned. We are coming to interdisciplinary as far as the conception of knowledge is concerned. We have disciplines connected by common concepts and skills. We have knowledge considered to be socially constructed and we have many right answers available over there. Under transdisciplinary, we have all knowledge interconnected and interdependent also. So we have many right answers acceptable under transdisciplinary, we have knowledge considered to be indeterminate and ambiguous also. Let's go to the next segment which talks about roles of disciplines as far as the three types of integration are concerned. We have under multidisciplinary, we have procedures of discipline considered most important. We have distinct skills and concepts of disciplines taught in multidisciplinary approach. Under interdisciplinary, we have interdisciplinary skills and concepts stressed. Under transdisciplinary, we have disciplines identified if desired, but real life context is emphasized. The another segment which talks about the role of teacher as far as the three types of integration is concerned. Under multidisciplinary, the role of the teacher is of a facilitator and a specialist. In interdisciplinary, the role of the teacher again is of a facilitator, a specialist and a generalist also. Under transdisciplinary, we have the role of a teacher as co-planner and as co-learner also because under transdisciplinary, teacher is also considered to be a co-learner because she is supposed to work with the students in order to explore the new information and knowledge with them. We have the next point which talks about starting place. On a multidisciplinary, we have disciplinary standards and procedures. In interdisciplinary, we have interdisciplinary bridge. We have knowing, we have doing 
and we have to be also. And under transdisciplinary, we have student questions and concerns also. And the starting place is always the real world context. The students are being sent to the real world and they are being asked to explore and try to find out the places, the problems where they can start and explore the solutions and get the solutions on their own. We have the next segment talks about the degree of integration. In multidisciplinary, we have the moderate kind of a integration happening. In interdisciplinary, we have the medium and but sometimes the amount of integration is intense. And under transdisciplinary, it's completely a paradigm shift because we are shifting totally from the normal approaches of teaching. So we come to the next segment which talks about assessment. Multidisciplinary, we talk about discipline-based assessment is there. In interdisciplinary, we talk about interdisciplinary skills, concepts are stressed and under transdisciplinary, we have interdisciplinary skills and concepts are stressed. Learners, let's sum what we have done to today. We did explore the meaning of integrated learning and teaching. We have seen the three types of integrated learning and teaching. We have seen the integration within the subject area. We have seen integration between various subject areas and we have seen integration beyond the subject area. And we did talk about the comparing and contrasting the different approaches or the different kinds of integration as far as the different segments of integration are concerned. In the next class, we are going to see or we are going to explore the other parts or the other segments of integrated learning. Thank you.